in my previous video, I talk about uh, my surprise and embarrassment of the uh, epoxy. Embarrassment was epoxy was just hardened in my hand, but eventually I was able to use epoxy to patch the ABS pipe to seal it. At the end, I still didn't feel comfortable. What if the epoxy break or starts leaking? So I was looking for a way to electronically monitor it. So I came to the conclusion of building a moisture sensor. What is a moisture sensor? You're probably familiar with a garden moisture sensor. It's pretty easy to make. For example, you have a two nail, galvanized nail. The reason the galvanized is conduct the electricity but doesn't get rest. So what you do is make two nail in parallel but not touching each other. Use a glue gum to dab say one here, one here. So you can make sure they stay together but not touching each other. And then you make a wire at this end. Afterwards you use the straw to put this, this two in the straw and then cut the straw and put the moisture center in the soil you want to measure the soil resistance so the way to measure is you use a, a meter like this you can do it turn to the dial of say the ohm the reason you make this you want to save some water uh, you measure the soil resistance you resistance translate to how much water is there in the soil but this is uh, really not what I'm trying to share with you this time. This is for the garden. You know exactly you expect the water. In my situation, I don't really expect water. I expect dry. So I don't want to spend uh, too much time making this thing. I want something even simpler. So the way I did it is I have this. I use a wire, a wire, you have a wire, you have a two of this wire uh, next to each other, or this kind of wire, you see there are two wire, or I'm, I can show you, it's a telephone wire, telephone wire has a four, the first step, I tie this telephone wire like this. And make a tie so it will stay here so this is the first step I do make sure the metal don't touch each other and second step is I want to not cutting the wire but making this metal exposed you use this and you use uh, also the uh, knife so use this uh, just a knife, uh, strip the plastic, make sure it doesn't cut the metal off, but expose the, the copper, okay, and to do the place whenever you want to test the moisture, say on this spot and, or any other spot um, here. And you, if you have a multiple, you just have another one, say tight here, and expose the wire same way and clip, um, use a knife, uh, uh, expose the wire here. So just in theory, that will work. And if you, you are not interested in here, say raining season, you have a, a crawl space or a basement you're concerned of flood, what you can do is you can say have a, a wire here and have a, this is a yogurt container and put a wire here and just put a rack to secure it. If there's a flood here and make sure this wire is exposed and the plastic is make sure usually it doesn't get a, a short here so if there's a water here and this 
sensor will send uh, will tell you that um, it's flooded. So that way you can monitor your basement or crawl space. So the next step is we're trying to do experiment, and this is a meter, uh, a multimeter. You select to ohm. When you select ohm, you are testing the resistance. And here we have a, a red and a black wire exposed. So I'm going to connect the black and red to the meter. And you're going to see there's a change on the resistance. So currently is infinite. There's really nothing. If I use a Kleenex, for example, tap some water here. So you tap a little bit water here. See that this is changing. So once it's changed, you know there are um, water here. If I let it if I let it go, see, it's no. So that means the signs are working. The next step is this you have to really use a meter to monitor. What do you do if you really want immediate attention? That's easy. Think about what kind of device that will help you to alert you. Here is a smoke detector. It's a regular smoke detector. And there's something called a test. See, if you press this, it will test whether your smoke detector is still working. What you do is you open this and find the point that press. There are two contacts here. One wire is here. You probably should solder. I'm just trying to do a quick demonstration here. And they demonstrate once you have a moisture, the smoke detector will will alarm you, and so you can restart your pump. Or see, see, it will start. So, what do you do if you uh, not doing an experiment? The real thing is very easy. Have a dry, uh, dry sock. Have a dry sock and tie here. You make a tie here. So if there's a, a flood on this pipe, this socks will get wet and smoke detector will fire. Some other way to mount the sensor, for example, you can put a bare metal into one cloth and then put a you know just use the cloth insulate this and then rub this and then the center you can uh, put in a small gap or you can use a, a masking tape to fasten to some other surface the same you can do for other material like this foam and put one a metal in into this and the other one into the other one and then you can fasten this somewhere and if you're concerned of fire you can use uh, this kind of material just insulator and put one here one there and then you know tape it or put in a small gap that you're trying to uh, measure the moisture but whatever you do remember this is supposed to be for dry condition if you really have a moist condition the copper will get rust then in that situation you need to use a galvanized uh, material okay so there are many many interesting applications you can have with the smoke detector just remember you probably should do some soldering here or if you can have a way like you know I have a clamp just connect that this uh, uh, doesn't really hurt if you have a 
smoke detector next to your water heater for example just wire your sensor to the water heater just in case water heater uh, leak you can have a smoke detector alarm you uh, if you like this video uh, please uh, comment on your application this is a, a great um, way to use the smoke detector maybe for some pranks